Hey everybody, welcome to a new series. My name is Pango Duck, of course, and we are going to be playing AI War 2, which is quite a niche game, but it deserves far more attention than it has. It's very, very, very good. I did play it some years ago, a little bit of a chunk of it, but now I've been dipping my toes in again, and God, it's a lot of fun. It's it's just it's just really good. So I don't really want to talk too much. Now, what I will say though is this episode I am going to be largely explaining how the game works. Now we will be playing at the same time, so we will take over planets. We'll be doing stuff. But I'm also going to be explaining the basics of the game. So be warned, if you really don't want to see all that stuff, maybe skip the episode and come back in next episode, or you will miss a bit of what we do. So, custom start then. For single player, here we go. So the premise of this game is the Humanity Ascendant campaign. In other words, there is... In other words, as if, as if it was obvious, there is a, um, a very large AI that's dangerous. Very, very dangerous. Very, very powerful. And has taken over the entire universe very strong and we are a small pocket of humanity who have managed to survive and we would like to very much take back the uh well the the map <laughs> we're going to take back the map but take back all these systems under our control now we are so powerless against this great and, and terrible ai that it doesn't give a shit what we're doing which is the only reason we're not dead because it's a much stronger force than us and it could wipe us out by looking at us if we're not careful so here's how the game works as we take more systems, as we do more things that upset the AI, it will start to pay more attention to us. And as it pays more attention to us, it will start trying to kill us more. So we've got to balance that with becoming stronger and stronger and taking more territory and getting more stuff while not pissing off the AI so much that he just comes and kills us. <laughs> so that's that's the premise of the game. All right. So let's talk about the map. We have realistic. I probably am going to use realistic, but you can do a ton. There is so much. Uh, ZO and TSR are the DLCs, and they add some extra content, maps included. Yeah, look, you can do a grid, which is a little bit uninspiring, isn't it? But it'll be interesting. Linked rings, uh, octopus is kind of cool. You can choose the number of arms, even. Look, eight arms, whatever you want to do. Two arms, three arms. Um, swirl. Oh, goodness. Wheel. Was, was that one? Yeah. The, the, basically, you can do, like, anything. And some of them, some of them have kind of more... More settings like clusters here. We can choose how many extra random connections to have. But we're just going to go realistic. I like this one. Map linking flavor is the to do with like how planets connect and how many connections they have. We'll just leave that default. And planet layout is the, the kind of layout of the whole thing. We've got rectangle right now. We can do like a big circle. We can do small circular. We'll just do rectangular. That's fine. Planet naming uh, will just be the, the naming style of the, the planets. We can have cities and stuff. I don't know the, the city of Mir, but sure. Uh, we can have a bunch of stuff. Roman Empire is kind of interesting. Syracuse. Why don't, why don't we do Roman Empire? That might be fun. Let's do that. And then the amount of planets, which can be anywhere between 120 and 40. So 40 will obviously be a much smaller map. And 120 will be very, very large with a lot going on. We're probably, and depending on which factions you add in stuff, that may affect what size you want. I'm kind of just going to go with 100 and see how we go. Although I would like to be, randomize it a few times and kind of find something that looks like a, a wonderful starting position for my new bass. Because I certainly am a new bass. Um, yeah, that'll be all right, you know. And try and take this area and fortify it. We'll try that. It should be okay. So we're going to be starting in Bithynia. So, on to the factions then. I said it was humans against AI, but by gosh, there's a few things you can do. If we click on add faction, there's a whole bunch of factions which massively change how the game plays. Now, the, the extra one I've added, last resistance, is the human resistance fighters. They don't have a huge effect on the game. Pockets of human allies still live in deep space around AI planets. When they see you fighting the AI, sometimes they'll reveal themselves and join you. Low impact. This faction does not expand and doesn't do any irreparable damage. They're a nice boost to your power, but they won't win games for you on their own. Just thought that might be cool, but at the same time... I don't really want their help. What if I change them to Marauders instead? So, Marauders... Well, let's read Marauders as well. Hostile human vagabonds who live in the deep space will occasionally raid human or AI planets via traditional propulsion methods, and thus come in from the edge of the system, not a wormhole. If they capture a planet, they will fortify it and use its resources to strengthen future attacks. Higher intensity gives this faction stronger and more frequent attacks. So their impact is variable. This faction expands and can do irreparable damage. If allowed to expand enough, they can be an enormous threat, but can struggle to get going initially. Their first method of attack can force some different strategies from the player as well. 
Because they are just going to come in from the edge of the map. No, we'll leave it. We'll leave it as it is. I mean, we'll have the human resistance fighters occasionally show up. I didn't mean to do that. Cancel. But that's who they are. But there are a lot of really interesting factions, like the the Nanocost, a horde of nanobots that take over other ships, hates the humans and AI alike. Extremely high impact because they can just kill everybody. We can we can also add extra AI and have them have a civil war or work together. And we can add all these, like all these ones from the DLC are really interesting. All the Zenith factions, the Spire factions, there's like a fallen Spire faction and then a splintering Spire and they all interact with each other. You can massively change how the game plays. I am just going to keep it like this with me as a, a human empire and then the AI. And then we'll have the last resistance. So pockets of, of humans are, are drawn to our cause every now and then just for fun. Just for fun. So... We'll just nip into the options first. We don't really want to go through all these things. It doesn't really matter, but there are a lot of ways you can customize your game. Maybe the, the Cosmetic Fleet naming style will change that up. Maybe we could go Roman names for that as well. Why don't we go Elements? That might be a good time. We'll, we'll, we'll name fleets with Elements. Gravwell sizes. The Gravwell of a planet is the playable area around it. Because obviously you've got all these planets. When you go to the planet, to the system... There is just a small, well, fairly small ring around it where you can, where the game is actually played, you know. You can increase that. Like, it's 52k by default. You can go all the way up to 400k. So, like, basically four times as much. And you can do chaotic random, random with extreme, stuff like that, and change all, so that all the planets have random sizes. But what does this mean? Well, <laughs> this game is a lot about turrets <laughs> and bases and ships and ranges of stuff. There are cloaked ships. There are things that detect, de 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 collect, detect, cloaked units, stuff like that. So if you've got turrets, you've got tractor beams, you've got cloaking devices, things that reveal cloaking devices, stuff like that. They've all got ranges. They've all got ranges. So if you've got a really big playable area, it means stuff can dodge away from turrets, stuff can invade and then go and hide and cloak, you know, all kinds of things like that can happen. I am going to leave it default at 52k for now. We'll just keep it kind of default. Everything else, we don't really need to know. There's like roguelike additions and stuff, bonus random factions. You can really change how the game plays. Chaos, um, AI Civil War, that's what I talked about briefly. Shark mode is where the AI... <laughs> I mean, the AI gets more pissed off as you attack it, take its stuff, do things to it. This mode means that if they destroy any of your stuff, they also become more frenzied, <laughs> like blood in the water kind of shark stuff, which is really interesting. Also, again, there's all these advanced fields. I'm not going to open them up for now, but there's, there's a ton you can do. Defensive zombies. We'll talk about zombies later, I'm sure. Economics, how your allies behave. How they scout if you share vision with allies. And balance. I mean, is, nukes and EMPs are considered cheating by default. I've never even seen a, a nuke or an EMP in this game yet, so I don't know how that works. But apparently that's cheating and will disable your, your achievements if you do that. Okay, let's talk briefly through our, our settings then, and then we'll begin the game. So... Our faction color, highly customizable. When you zoom in, you will see ships. They are physically there. They have models. It's not just icons, but we may get in situations where you've got thousands and thousands of ships fighting. Like no memes, that can happen. And when that's the case, you kind of want to zoom out. And often you want to zoom out anyway. And you get these icons on top of ships to show you what kind of ship they are at a glance. So this will be your team color and trim. And you can pick whatever you want. So with the body color, let's say I wanted yellow. And perhaps for the trim, I wanted yellow as well, or black, or white, or green, or blue. You, know, you can have it however you want. However, there are these nice little presets to save you some time. And I have gone for that blue preset. Maybe that one instead. I kind of like that a bit more. Let's do... Oh, maybe this one? No, no, let's do that one. I kind of like that one. We've got orange for the AI, which I've chosen, the kind of pango orange. And then for the resistance, we've got green. All right. So, player type. We are a human empire. There are these other ones from the DLC. We can also spectate, which we're not going to do. The I don't really know a lot about these because I've not really investigated, but the Ark Empire, for example, rather than having a home system that you start with, you start with a big Ark ship. And it has various... And you have to go and take a home world, essentially, with your Ark ship. But you get a bunch of bonuses for that, you know, to make up for it and make it an interesting campaign. Starting fleet. Now, this is where we have to start talking game mechanics. Fleets. Fleets, battle stations, support fleets and actually command stations on planets. How does this work? So the starting fleet, there are a bunch of different fleets you can begin with. You start with one proper normal mobile combat fleet. You can choose which fleet you start with. So if we look at the classic fleet, this is where I'm going to talk about, it's like a main mechanic of how almost everything works in terms of like combat, defense, everything. Every fleet or battle station essentially has 
a flagship or a flag battle station. The thing in green. All right. So for fleets, classic fleet, that's a transport flagship. That is the main part of the fleet. That is the fleet in itself. You can see that this one in particular, the flagship doesn't even have any weapons. Very fast and relatively durable flagship with no weaponry, mainly useful for shuttling its fleet around quickly and protecting them during raid attacks. So the point is with this one, you can load everybody into it. All of your ships can load into it. You can move them around quickly. You can use it for defense, whatever you need to do. So the way that you actually get ships, it's not like Stellaris where you go and queue up three corvettes and then they build them and, you know, then they're there and you can put them in a fleet or whatever. These, you see in, in blue, these different these different ship types with numbers, they come as kind of like pre-packed modules. You can have, you can have in this fleet, you have 56 V-Wings and you, your factories will build up to 56 V-Wings automatically for this fleet and they will join this fleet and they are just in the fleet. That's how it works. Now, that might increase as you upgrade your fleet. That 56 might go up to 86 or whatever as you... But, but the point is, let's pretend there are no upgrades for the sake of explaining. It's just 56 V-Wings forever. Now, I can take that module of 56 V-Wings out and put it in a different fleet, assign it to a different flagship in a different fleet if I want. But I can't take like 20 V-Wings out and leave 36 here and put 20 elsewhere. That is a whole module that comes as it is. And it actually makes for quite an interesting mechanic. Because you've got the... Oh, I really want to mouse over it. But you've got these these four modules. Let's call them modules for the sake of argument. In there. there are three force field frigates. 42 heavy fusion bombers. 56 concussion corvettes. And 56 V-Wings. When you go and steal another kind of design from the AI for another ship type. You can add that into as a slot 5. Let's say you, you get... Let's make one up. Let's say you, you, you find the designs for an X-Fighter. And it comes with 40 X-Fighters. Suddenly, you can slot that into slot 5 of your your fleet, and then it, your, your factories will build all of those X-Fighters for you, and they will join that fleet. If you suddenly decide, actually, I want them in a different fleet, you can take them and swap them out and put them in another fleet. You can swap them direct for another design, or just put them in the empty slot. This will become much clearer as we play. I promise. <laughs> I promise. It will become much clearer. But that's how you have to think of it. You can't split them up. You can just say, well, I've got 56 V-Wings that can go in this fleet or that fleet. And you get really interesting stuff. Now, this is where the different fleets come into play. Because obviously, as you can see, those are quite simple ship types. If we went for like, I don't know, a sniper fleet, you can see it's completely different ships. It's still a transport flagship in this case. But these are things with large range. And they do different stuff. I'm not going to sit here and read all the descriptions right now for you. But then we've got like um, parasitic fleet. And like, if we had to take a closer look at the Parasite Hydra, not very effective at destroying things, but instead causes targets to become allied zombies upon death and spawns copies of itself when it dies. So when it kills enemies, it makes them into zombies for me instead. Now, I can, basically, zombies are kind of just, as they sound, mindless ships that just go and attack automatically, but they'll be on my side. <laughs> so that's kind of interesting. I mean, there's some, there's some other fleets where you have a different flagship. This is an agile transport flagship extremely fast but less durable generally though they don't have these fleets don't have weapons on the flagship the flagship is not there to fight really it's just the hub and you can also load everybody in and move them so that's that battle stations work exactly the same but instead of ships it's turrets all right so the battle the battle station can move slowly slowly but it can move and it can build its turrets anyway. It can still only have 50 ambush turrets, as shown there in this case. But it can put them anywhere. It can put 10 on your home world. It can put 30 on another world. And then on the final world, it could put its last 10. And it can leave and the turrets will still work. But the point is, it only gives you capacity to build 50 ambush turrets. And it, and it can only you can only build them where the battle station is. Even though you can leave them afterwards, you have to be, be there to actually build them, okay? Again, don't worry too much, it'll become clear. But this is the point. I can't just go and build ambush turrets whenever I want, however many I want. You've got to have capacity. The actual planet command station will have some turret capacity, which you can only build those turrets locally to the planet, obviously. And then you've got the battle station to kind of supplement those defenses wherever you want. It'll become clear. And again, different battle stations will give different turrets and all kinds of things. And indeed, the battle station itself will have different, different kind of... Um, abilities and defenses you get two battle stations. i'm going to leave them all on random by the way we're just going to get a random one then the support fleet there's only three types and essentially the main point of these are there are they are factories they are mobile factories which means 
this support fleet can support your combat fleets by actually building replacement ships on the go and using its combat engineers to repair your your ships on the go because like if you other obviously if you're at a planet you control you've probably built factories which can then work and repair and, and do stuff like that but this gives you an on the go kind of support fleet to do that stuff the other two are kind of the same but like this one has less combat engineers look 14 compared to the 16 there but in return it has a few drones that can actually do things in combat and the rejuvenated thing has has a couple of other bits as well okay we're gonna leave all those on random but it was worth having this quick conversation about fleets because it will make so much more sense when we actually get into the game i think all right the ai then there's only one thing we really have to talk about well two two things the difficulty which is five i'm gonna leave it at five out of ten we're probably gonna lose but that's fine and then this is not the difficulty okay this is not the difficulty this is the playing style of the ai so these are easier styles to deal with then you've got moderate styles, and then you've got hard, and you've got brutal, like brutal, brutal swarmer. Rather fond of having lots of swarmer type units, as well as those which spawn more on death. So in other words, these are going to be really hard to play against because of the tactics and units that they use. Even though it's not the flat out difficulty of the game. We are going to leave it on full ensemble easier. Usually varied AI in terms of what its planets are like, however it doesn't use any niche tactics, usually. So sometimes it will do something niche in terms of tactics, but generally it won't. But it does have a big variance of stuff, which means it's kind of interesting. You've got stuff like Shield Hater, likes units that are good against defenses, so it will build units mostly that do a lot of damage to shields. Overreactive will like overreact when you're attacking it and send really big waves to defend or counterattack. Stuff like that, but we are just going to go full ensemble. Now, you can pick random, so it does a random of each section of whatever section you want, like a random moderate one. But you can do adaptive for each section as well, which will cycle through them. So if we wanted to fight like a an adaptive moderate, it would actually cycle around doing these different styles and we wouldn't know what it's doing, which I think is really cool. But we are going to just be going for the full ensemble for now. But th those are really good options to vary up the difficulty and kind of just the interest in what you're doing. And maybe maybe you make it harder where you do like an adaptive hard. So it's doing hard styles. You don't know what it's doing. But then as a kind of thing against that, you added some more factions to fuck with it. Maybe another AI faction that goes to civil war with it. Maybe... Nan, of course, maybe the Marauders, you insert them because you know they're going to fight against the AI as well. All kinds of stuff like that we can do. I mean, if I add the Marauders for a sec, can we ally with them? Yeah, you can. Oh, we could do that instead then. But then it's kind of cheating, isn't it? Maybe we won't this time, but you, could, you can actually make the Marauders friendly to players and then it becomes like a full-on ally. Right? We can choose the intensity, which is essentially the difficulty, which we just leave at five. And then we can, we can either make it a tactician or brute force intelligence. And invasion time is when they join the galaxy, essentially. We could do that. And then they could become an ally of ours. But we won't for now, because I want the I want this game to be about the base game. And, like, the last resistance won't get involved too much. But, yeah, you can have allies. So you could, you could set up a bunch of marauders or whatever with you. And then just have some nasty AI. A bunch of stuff you can do. Anyway. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to have random fleet. So let's finally jump in after like 20 minutes. We do need a name. We'll call it the, the Pangolian Tech campaign. And we'll start. And it will immediately start. And we will pause. If I press space to pause. The time is down here. You can speed up, slow down, whatever. Now, before we actually look at our homeworld in detail. Oh, as a side note, the music is excellent. Right. So let's look at our, our UI because we've got to just figure this out a bit. I will say, look at the tooltip. Kind of scary. Most of that information we just don't need, so don't worry. And as another thing, that is the brief tooltip. Like, let's let's go on our fleet, for example. There is a brief tooltip. If I hit Control, it gives more info. If I hit Alt, it gives more info. Different more info. If I hit both, you get the full tooltip. So if you really do want to dive deep into stuff and figure stuff out, you absolutely can. All the info is there. But you don't need to. Not at all. All right, so at the top left, we have the current planet we're on, Bithynia, which is our homeworld. And if you click that, you go out to the galaxy map. You remember? You can also do that with tab, which is great. So we can tab in and out. Our first resource is metal, which is this icon. You'll notice we have a bunch of icons like that around. They are metal harvesters. But that is the metal icon. You can see how much we have, 2.5 million, and how much we're gaining per second or losing per second. Metal is a normal resource, just like any game. You can collect it. You can stockpile it whatever up to a certain point with your storage which you can increase but you know 
and then you can just spend it. And it shows how much you're using per second. You know, if you're building a bunch of stuff, it will, you might lose it for a while. It's just a flat normal resource. And as you take planets and build command stations, the command station on the planet will generate metal and the harvesters will generate metal and there are certain special, you know, special uh, like landmarks and things that give more metal. So that's a very simple normal resource. Energy is the other resource. This is different. Um, you can't stockpile energy. Energy is just a constant thing. You're generating X amount and you're using X amount. Make sure you've got a surplus. That's it. So we, we generate right now like a bit over 500,000. Okay, let's just call it that. And we're using about 40,000. That's fine. We can go all the way up and use 500,000. It doesn't matter as long as we've got enough energy to do what we're doing. It's a constant flow. We can't stockpile it. It doesn't save up. You're just constantly generating X and constantly using Y. You need to make sure you're always generating enough for your current usage. Okay. You can see in the tooltip there, if you go below minus 50,000, uh, likely by having a command station destroyed, because maybe you're using almost all your energy and then you lose a command station, which was generating a lot of it. You lose that and, and you go below minus 50,000 for 10 seconds, you'll get a brownout. During a brownout, all of your force fields are disabled. When power is restored, they take 120 seconds to come back online, which is rather disappointing. So those are the main resources, metal and energy. You've then got these more static resources, science and hacking points. Hacking points you spend to do hacks. When you do hacks, when, like when you go to a planet, you might have, if you click on hacks, you might have a bunch of things you can do spending hacking points. They're very simple. We'll get to them. In terms of tech, you spend your flat science number to get upgrades. All these different types of weapons, all the types of hulls, um, engineering, mining, your command post and your defenses and stuff like that. You can upgrade these up to mark whatever it is. So like four times in these cases, and it will get more expensive each time. And let's say artillery weapons, all of your ships that have artillery weapons will be upgraded. Yeah. As you upgrade it. How do you get science and hack points? You get them from planets, but they are finite. So you take a planet, it will have so much science. I mean, can we see here? We've actually, no, we start by having all the science off our planet. So we're not gaining any science now. When we take another planet, it will have X amount of science on it, and we will slowly harvest that over time, but it's finite, and we will just have it. That said, obviously, it can just sit there forever until we're ready to spend it on whatever we want to do. All right. So those are the, the, the secondary kind of more static resources. And then these are not resources. These are indicators. AI progress is how pissed off the AI is. OK, if we if we like, let's go out into an uh, into a into an AI um, system for a sec. If you look in the tooltip here, the white text AI, AI progress will rise by 15 if this dies. So if we come here and kill their command post, this will rise by 15. And this is how pissy they're getting in, in essence. This is how pissed off they are. So you can actually see some of the things they will do. Like you see, it says AI difficulty, difficulty five in that second section. Counterattacks unlock at AI uh, P50. So when we get this to 50 by taking their stuff, they'll start counterattacking when we take their stuff. When it gets to 70, they'll start sending waves of enemies to try and reconquer their past uh, systems that we've taken from them. 120 wormhole borers. I don't even fucking know exactly what that means. I can't remember. And wormhole invasions at 300. So this is where the balance comes in of deciding what to take, how much to piss them off. And we'll get into like why you would pick what to take in a moment. But how much you want to upset them, what you want to take, and how much that's going to cost you in terms of progress towards them just coming and kicking your ass. All right. Uh, threat is kind of a weird thing. It's AI forces actively waiting to strike you when they sense weakness. I don't fucking know what that really means. We're just not going to worry about it. All right. And then total strength of attacking enemy ships on your um, team's planets, which is whatever. Then you've got an encyclopedia. OK, so those are the resources. Now, this looks like a lot of shit. Most of the reason for that is these are only present on your home world. So you've got a command station. Every time you go and take a planet, you build a command station and then essentially you own the own the system and you will, your engineers will go and capture all the, the harvesters and then you can build turrets and stuff and whatever. You can build a factory. This is a factory when you've built a command station on a planet after destroying the AIs. This is a force field generator, which is this bubble. Essentially, if we look at the tooltip here, protects nearby ships and structures. Units protected by this will deal half the usual damage completely immobile, thus unable to be pushed by the Norris effect, blah, 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 blah. But 
Enemies can't even come into the force field, never mind shoot through it. But you will do half damage shooting through it, which is fine, right? That's a fair trade. Obviously, they can attack the force field and deplete its shield and then it will go down. All right, these are our engineers and this is where the icons come into play. Look, because if I zoom in, they are actually ships. We've started with two engineers. This weird line is them actually lending their construction power to the factory because what's happening right now is we've got our fleets here, our two battle stations, our fleet and our support fleet. We don't have any ships constructed. So what's happening is the factory is about to, when we unpause, start creating all the ships for the fleet and they're lending their support to the factory, their construction power. This shit um, will never be on any other planet. So don't. it, it looks like too much. It's human home settlements and... Um, sorry. Home human settlements and human cryogenic pods. <laughs> Essentially, it's just a way to give you early game resources because this generates metal per second, 520, and these generate energy, 7,500. If they're destroyed, you'll notice it says AI progress will rise by five for each one of these they kill and uh, rise by one for each one of these they kill and you'll lose the resource production. But it doesn't really matter. You don't want AI getting near your, your friggin' home system stuff, do you? So you don't need to worry about any of that shit. It doesn't do anything. It just gives you resources. Okay, we're getting we're getting there now. So then then we've then then we've got our fleets. I mean, if I open the so that's a, shows you what's at the local planet. I find that a little bit overwhelming. But if we just go to fleets, mobile strike is our normal fleet. The the mobile strike and mobile support fleets have hotkeys one and two, one two one two. And it shows the hotkey there. But that's our normal fleet. That's our support fleet. We actually got the rejuvenated one. And then our two battle stations. And the command station is the, the planet station. Okay. So if we click on our, our fleet, fleet one, we did get the Om Omniscient fleet. God, that's going to be annoying. I can rename it, by the way. If I left click here, I think edit name. Yeah, there we go. In edit name. You get a bunch of options. Don't worry about them. I mean, you can turn off factories reinforcing them and stuff here. It doesn't matter at the moment. You just just leave it. I think on watch list puts it on this so you could take it off. But the key here is we can see which. This is where I talk about modules. We can see which ships we have here, which is what our factory is going to start churning out. We have nine apparition FFL. So it's an apparition frigate. Let's take a look at what this does. So we have a transport flagship, which we know about the apparition frigate. We don't have to care about the numbers of DPS and everything. I just kind of want to know what it does. And if we look at the gray text, that's really telling us. Fast cloaked frigates. These are cloaked. That bypasses most personal shielding with low general damage, but much more versus healthy targets. It's also resistant to distant hostiles. So it's a, it's kind of a... They're frigates, so there's only nine of them because they're quite big, but they're actually cloaked and they get up, up, up and close. Then we've got spiders. 56 spiders. Applies a slow effect to hostile ships at moderate range. So they're fighters and they do damage, but they also apply a slow. 56 of those. We've got 112 ablative, ablative, probably ab ablative gatling, which I've never seen that word in my life. Ablative, not, not gatling. Incredibly dangerous against high albedo. What the hell's albedo? I've never seen these words. I've played this game a bunch. Okay, well, they're incredibly dangerous against high albino ships. It's not albino. Using their own defenses against them. I see. So ships with high defenses, these are actually really good against them. You'll notice the attack bonus. You see where it says in red, attack bonus above that gray description. If target, I've never seen that word. Is it albedo? Albedo? I've never seen it. Doesn't matter. If target albedo is more than 0.7, it gets a five times damage modifier. And there is a lot of stuff like this where they get modifiers like an anti-shield ship will get a massive modifier if the enemy sh uh, ship has a shield that's certain a certain size, you know. And then we've got 28 rangers. I must say, this is a very complicated fleet to get. <laughs> I probably should have just picked the, picked the classic one, but it's fine. We have 28 rangers. Rather mobile, advanced, and expensive marksman support unit with decent ability to reveal cloaked units and is cloaked itself. So we have quite a bit of cloaking. I mean, we are an omniscient fleet, so I guess that's not surprising. If you were just starting out, maybe just get maybe just get the classic fleet first, you know, and it's just got bombers and fighters and you don't <laughs> But it doesn't matter because we don't have to micromanage the combat too much, so it's not a big deal. Alright. If we look at our rejuvenated support then, just to get a real idea about this, we've got oh, it comes with decoy drones. I see. So you've got you've got 20 engineers, you've actually got a couple of combat sentry frigates, which is nice. Um they're a decloaker as well, look. They actually can decloak stuff, which is brilliant. And then uh, engineers are engineers. They'll go and repair, assist with construction. And we've actually got decoy drones. 
Support engineer drone with very little firepower, but high priority to enemies. So in other words, it tanks. Enemies feel compelled to shoot at it. This unit is never eligible for repairs. Obviously, it's a drone. We don't repair them, but we can obviously rebuild them after they die, right? It's going to cost metal, but we'll have to. They do have vampirism, so they essentially leech health. They don't do much damage, but they, they do tank a bit and they, they leech health by attacking. Kind of good for a support unit. And the rejuvenator itself then. Mobile facility that automatically repairs, uh, replaces nearby fleet losses and repairs nearby units. That's the same for all combat factories. But because it's a rejuvenator, has far greater repair speed and launches drones that act as decoys, which we've just seen. I imagine maybe it doesn't build as quickly. Since it repairs really quickly, it probably doesn't build as quickly. Is probably what the, the situation is. But we don't need to look into it too closely, to be honest. So that's that. That's our two fleets. We're all the engineers and the and everything and the drones and then all of the ships for here are all going to start building from the factory. The battle stations, we don't I'm not going to look through the turrets, but they give you an idea. So we have an eclectic battle station. Can move from planet to planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This battle station has very powerful engineering capabilities. Okay. Oh, because it's an engineering battle station. I see. Also rebuild structures from their remains. I don't think normal ones can. Let's just check out this one for a sec. Yes, this one can't. So the fact that we've got an engineering battle station means it can actually build as well. Which is really interesting. It comes with various turrets, lots of mines. It comes with 120 area mines. Tractor beams, stuff like that. That's fine. A couple of frigates as well. And indeed four engineers because it's an engineering one. The shield defenses battle station that we've randomed into. Oh, it does have four engineers as well. My bad. They all have engineers, but this one can't rebuild remains. Um, rebuild structure. Oh, yes, it can. I'm so blind. Just ignore me. It can rebuild. All of them can. This battle station has greatly improved shields that extend out around itself. So that's what the shield wall battle station is from the shield defensive um, battle station fleet. And it has beam turrets, plasma turrets, sniper turrets. Good stuff. We don't need to worry. I'm just kind of skimming over it. We don't really care. And then we don't need to look at that. So... They're going to build their ships, which we'll see when we unpause. What do we need to do? I just moved someone, didn't I? Don't don't move, you're fine. What do we need to do now? If we head onto the build tab, this is where, don't be overwhelmed, it's fine. We're going to minimize all these sections for a sec, and we're just going to look at infrastructure. Now, the name underneath is who it belongs to. So if we look at the, this is the, the planet Bithynia, which is essentially the command station. If we remember from the, the command station, if you go five lines or so up in the white text, you've got Engineer, Mark 1, 2 out of 12. We have two there now, but you can have 12. And that's why if you look at Engineers here belonging to Bithynia, 2 out of 12, they cost 3k each. We can build 10 more. And I'm going to because, as you know, Engineers help with construction. So we want these as soon as possible. You can always, with everything, hold Control to build 5 at a time, Alt to build 10, or both to build 50. But if I just hold um, Alt to build 10... You can see now 12 out of 12, they're all going to switch and start building those engineers, which in turn will feed back into it and they'll help each other build. Wonderful. We already have one out of one factory. And I don't need a matter converter. A matter converter changes, well, look, 500 metal a second cost for 50,000 energy. Changes metal into energy. So that's it for infrastructure. Turrets then. Here's where you can see, look, the, the, the planet command station itself can only build 20 pike turrets. Here they are. They've got quite a big range. We can build those. But the battle stations also have their turret capacity. Granted, they're very specialized turrets, so they can't build that many, I must say. And some of them are very expensive. 225k metal for that. Huge range, though. Now, they can be built anywhere. The battle station has to be there to build them. These are the battle stations. But then, as I said previously, I could leave and go to the Valencia system and the turrets would be left here. Still taking up the capacity if I built... Um, like three of these, I could only build two more elsewhere, but there you go. The planet ones always have to be local, so you may as well build them here. The only question is where to build them. And that's really what we're going to get to once we decide where we're going to expand. Do we want to build turrets? Like, let's say, let's pretend they don't exist and you've got these two. You might want to build all your turrets here so that as soon as ships come out of the, um, the wormholes or whatever they're called, they will be fired at. The problem is, though, what if they manage to get past your turrets and get to your command thing and your turrets don't reach to shoot at them while they're there so that's the decision you have to make and obviously in our case we've actually got a bunch of spread out wormholes we've got to defend against so that's that all right other defenses will be force fields which will just be more of these you pop that down you'll get another force field 
Um, a tachyon array is a decloaker, so you kind of you kind of want those near the near the wormholes so they can decloak any cloaked units immediately. Tractor beam will hold a bunch of ships in place within its range, and that's it. And then obviously we can build those from the planet, and then you've got a bit of capacity from the the um, battle stations as well. Okay, and our battle stations happen to have a bunch of mines, so we can build area mines, which will just do damage, and then you've got paralysis mines, which do the obvious um, paralyze enemy ships. So we can build those. We can build up to, what, 120 total for each battle station. But again, that's globally. And through the whole the whole map, these guys can only control 120 mines. They all blow up, but then you can come and rebuild them afterwards, obviously. And they'll stay there. You don't have to manually put them down each time, mines. They will be rebuilt automatically once combat is over. Finally, you've got station keepers, which are a bit interesting. You see, most we've got a couple of sentries we can have on the battle station. But the planet will generally have quite a few of these available. And these are frigates, which stay in the system. They don't go out with fleets. They only stay here. They all roam around and hunt down enemies. You've got the assault frigate, which is what you'd expect. And then you've got a watchman frigate as well, which is a... Um, it's not actually a decloaker, this one. You can get sentry frigates depending on your command station. But in, in this case, we the sentry frigate is from the, the battle station. And we can only get watchman and assault from here. What is it that the watchman does? Oh, it's quicker, I think. Yeah, this one's heavy hitting. This one's quicker, so it can chase down stuff. Which is quite good. All right, so what I'm actually going to do now... Well, actually, you know, let's let's talk what we're going to do before I unpause, because then I want to. I need to check the metal situation while we build our fleet, and then we need to build some more defenses. So the next the next thing to come up. I mean, yes, we want to spend our technology, but I'm not going to do that yet. The next thing we need to decide is where we're going to invade. So you'll notice we've got H eight S here and zero S. If I if you look at the tooltip underneath, mobile strength is eight. Immobile strength is zero. Immobile strength is turrets and stuff and defenses mobile strength is the the fleets so obviously the strength is low right now that's because we haven't built any of the frigate ships yet we've got 206 uh, ships in this fleet and we've built one of them 43 in this and so on so we're going to build those and we'll get more strength then we can see the strength of the, of the defenders which obviously the game makes the systems right next to you weak so that you can very easily take them so we then have to decide what we're going to take now you might think well you just take whatever you can kind of lock off in a choke point assuming you've got enough strength to conquer it but no there are other factors in play these icons underneath all represent stuff you get so this one for example is a turret schematic server we can hack this three times and each time we'll get well out of a selection of turrets we can pick one to have as a design and then we'll have that added to all of our stuff all of our planets all of our battle stations will be able to build you know 10 of whatever it is 10 bulwark turrets or whatever so that's really big because then you suddenly you can build way more turrets you can build them elsewhere and we can do that three times and unlock three types of turrets down here we've got a transport flagship it's a fleet we capture this we literally just get a whole new fleet like this and you can see what ships this one comes with paralyze let's see near the bottom sorry paralyzer mark one 98 of them 98 gun bots and 98 stingrays as well that's what it will start with after you capture it very nice. This one doesn't seem to have anything. This one actually has a combat factory, so we can get another support fleet. Has a distribution node, which is a stockpile of science and hacking points. Like, so we get this, we'll get a whole bunch of science and hacking points. And a warden fleet base. Warden fleet rally and reinforcement point. Don't know exactly what that does, but it's a little bit scary. What else have we got nearby? We've got another fleet there, which again will have different ships on it. It's got dark mirrors and auto cannon mini pods. Up here, we've got an advanced research station. Oopsie daisy. Which is, while that one gives turret um, designs, this one gives ship designs. So we can do the same thing. We can hack it and get ship designs into whichever fleet we want. But you can see, look, in the first selection, we can choose between 45 iBots, 45 MLRS Corvettes, 45 Raptors, or 9 Mine Layer Frigates. Let's say we choose the Raptors. Suddenly, we can put 45 Raptors in one of our fleets. Yeah? Hopefully that makes sense. So that makes a big part of deciding. And on top of that, you don't want to just... Obviously, we're going to take everything, but you need to be careful about the order because obviously as you take stuff, AI progress, AIP is going to rise and they're going to get ratty and you need to be able to make sure you can defend. The other final consideration is 
The place where we go and conquer, we don't necessarily have to defend the wormhole from there too much. So I think, honestly, getting another fleet early would be really good, wouldn't it? The only worry is that's very adjacent to a strength 26 system, which may get ratty with it. I mean, they've all got problems. The fact that that's a Mark III, I'm trying to remember what that really means. I mean, they're going to get ratty about it. We're essentially just saying that they have more guard strength, but it's not really that much, is it? But I suppose it's more than it normally would be for one adjacent to us. It's usually like five, four, three, but that one's nine. I think that we're going to get the fleet. I think getting another fleet online quickly is good because then you've always got a, a couple. You can use one to conquer. You can use them both to conquer and have more firepower. You can move one to defend. I think that gives you a lot more options. So we're therefore going to go, if we hold control, we can see all the names. We're going to go to this place. Emerita Augusta. A little bit awkward though, because then you think, well, where do we build our turrets to defend? I feel like now, with how split out all these are, and again, this is random depending on your map. I don't really want to do this. I think what I'm actually going to do is, for the time being, we're going to build all 20 of our planet turrets in here. Inside the force field. Then I'm going to, for the time being... Not left, if the right click to. I'm going to move our battle stations inside as well, and we're just going to defend the middle if we get attacked. For the time being, while I figure things out, we can always change this later. We can delete the turrets, we can move them around. So I'm going to unpause. Here we go. Um, all those other engineers that we queued up are now being built, and then they're starting to construct things. We're constructing the turrets. Now you can see we're losing a ton of metal per second. Which is why I could have not constructed the turrets yet and got my fleet online first. That's open for debate whether that would have been a better idea. I'm keeping my support fleet cl uh, close because I want all the support fleet engineers to help construct. The main fleet though, here we go. So, you know, we know we've got apparition frigates, spiders, uh, rangers. We should see those popping out. That's that ablative, ablative <laughs> gatling. Those are the spiders that, which have a slow. You can see all the info about them, look. You can do the full tooltip if you really want to read everything. There's one of the rangers. And all this stuff will pop out. We're just, you know, the factory's building it. I know it comes out from here, even though the factory's there. I know, I know. And all the engineers are both using the combat factory there and the main factory on the planet to build everything. All the turrets are now done. So we're not losing quite as much metal per second while all this is going on. And we're just going to get up to full force and then we're going to head out. One other thing I need to do... There's a couple of things down here. I mean, I can do this while we're building. If I just right click, you bet, sir. you'll notice that, I mean, the flagship's actually quite quick compared to most of the fleet, Understood. but that all the different ships have different speeds. And if I right click, they'll do this. What I can do, I'll see well, A, I can load everything into the ship, which we'll get to. But what I can do is I can hit group move here and they'll all move together at the slower speed, you know, as needed. So that's an option. The other thing I do want to turn on, if I turn that off, turn it off is Pursuit. Pursuit mode means basically they will automatically hunt down any enemies in the system they're currently in, whether it's enemy or allied. So I think that's well worth having. I'll put it on there as well. It does mean things will get a bit disorganized. I mean, if you do want to keep things together, maybe if you had like a force field frigate in there, which provides a force field, you'd want to keep everybody together inside the force field. But generally, for me, being a big noob and it being early game, we can just kind of go ape shit and let them all just kind of crush on everything. So I think we finished building now. You'll notice. Well, we are gaining metal. It's just not showing how much we're gaining. Why not? Why is it not showing how much we're gaining metal? Anyway, we're gaining metal again. Because <laughs> everything's finished building. What I will do now that we're in a, a state of surplus. Is I think we better build the some of the station keepers as well. They're quite expensive. 100k metal. We'll build them inside the force field. I mean, they're probably going to move. Um, why don't we get like... Honestly, let's get like four of those and a couple of the Watchmans just for now. And they can, and we'll we'll let the, God, we have a lot of engineers with this rejuvenator, don't we? We'll build that up. You can see the progress, by the way, in the corner if you click on them. But you can see the health going up on the tooltip as well. So we'll get those built. Right, we don't really need the support thing to stay here though. So the other thing we can do, is we can hit L, load up, we'll load up both. You don't have to load up, but it makes sense. And we're going to this one, aren't we? So I'm going to move them next to it. Yeah, we're going to go and capture this fleet. Only three strength. You can now see, look, we have 13 
uh, immobile strength from the turrets and 16 from the fleet. You can also see the strength on the fleet. Look, 7 there, 2 there. Um, and then it's obviously the rest is coming from the, the 3 and the 4. So actually the strength of the fleet is only 7 plus the 2. But obviously we're only going to fight a strength 3. So we should be fine. I'm going to pause. I'm going to control right click to send them through. I'm going to control left click to send me through. The other thing I can do is when I'm here is I can press the hotkey and then just right click to move and they will find their way here. But let's do that. I'm going to unpause. All right, here they are. Let's just spread out a sec. And then see the AI is starting to pop pop ships out of its command station. And I think it's probably got unarmed guard posts that have a bunch of fighters in. Nine raiders here that will all split off in a moment. Stingrays and stuff. They're going to start scrambling their defenses. I'm just going to unload everybody. There we go. I press U and it unloads everybody. We've got pursuit on. And now it's all going to kick off. And the, because I'm not group moving, this is going to happen. We've got the much faster ships going off on their own. They are cloaked though, right? So unless they've got decloaking here, they're not going to be able to do much. I will actually move the flagship and the support fleet into the middle. The engineers will go to repair our ships when necessary. You can actually see a lot of their ships are running away. <laughs> they're fleeing to Korea. We're trying to chase them down, but they're actually too fast. All of our all of our decoy drones there from the support fleet tanking a lot of the damage. The weapons are loud, aren't they? I might adjust my audio. Oh, you can see now that we're gaining metal, look. Alright, so obviously it wasn't a very well defended system. They're, they're automatically going to go around and just destroy all these guard posts now. Unfortunately, these ships are very slow compared to them. These, these frigates are so fast. The apparition frigates. Really, really fast. All right, and that's it. Now they're going to sit here. And you may wonder why they're not automatically destroying the command station. It's because it's set to not automatically destroy buildings that increase the AI progress. Because, you know, you don't want that accidentally happening if you don't want to, right? So, but now we can right-click it and destroy the base. Which won't take long. Jesus. All right, so I'm going to pause now. And you can see, look... They, they had a, a warp gate here as well. So in total, we've got plus 20 AIP from that. I think there's a log of AIP somewhere. Is it campaign journal? Oh, no, you click this, do you? You click this. There you go. AIP change history. So you can see plus five from killing a warp gate here. Plus 15 from killing the command station. The warp gate died when the command station did. All right. I have paused, but let's just move everybody out of the way for a sec. And now we need to build... We go and build now. We can build a command station. So, we have a choice to make. We've got economic, logistical, and military. Now, obviously, logistical is a compromise between the two. The economic command station, you can see in the tooltip there, produces 400 metal per second, adds 300,000 metal storage. I think we have 2.5 million storage right now. Doesn't show. It doesn't show, but I think we do. Um, so that adds more storage and it also generates 500,000 energy. So that's a lot, right? Because so 400 metal per second, 500,000 energy. If we go to the military one, 50 metal per second, 70,000 energy. But it has a whole bunch of weapons on it. Whereas the economic thing doesn't really have any defenses. Very little capability. Won't allow you to build too many turrets, probably, compared to this. This will allow you to build... You can see all that stuff at the bottom. Eight pike turrets, 21 engineers, spies, blah, 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 station keeping, no, 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 no. You go on economic, actually I was on the wrong one, 16 turrets on military, legit, uh, but on economic, four turrets and much less stuff. Logistical is a balance between the two. 90 metal, 175 energy. So logistical would probably be sensible. I would love to get economic. I love to be greedy. But, I mean, we've got these guys right here and they're pretty strong. I mean, maybe I should get military, to be honest. Just because of that 26 strength here. Don't want to. By the way, because we've not built a command post. Okay, what I should have said. Things that are one jump away from planets we own, we can see in real time. Perfectly fine, perfectly crystal clear. Two jumps away. Like this one. Well, it's about to be one jump away. But we haven't captured this yet, so it's still two jumps away. You see, it's fuzzy. Do you see? It's fuzzy. We don't have a live look, even though we can see stuff. And if we mouse over the system in the tooltip, you see it says explored 297 seconds ago. So it explores it probably only when the game starts or when you capture a system. 
But then after that, you don't know what's going on. If new stuff comes in, you don't know it's there, which is why there's a question mark next to the strength, because we don't know yet. And then past that, if it's unexplored, you, you can't really see anything at all. All right. So it doesn't really matter, but I'm just pointing out, well, that's why that question mark is there on that one, because it's still technically two jumps away from systems that we own. So, yeah, I think... <sighs> I think it's going to be a bit cheeky and go logistical. I don't really want to go full military. I would love to go economic, though, but it's risky, isn't it? It's going to be a little while before I take that, I think. Yeah, I think we'll go logistical. We'll play a half risk. So I can build this anyway. I'm just going to build it on top of the planet. The If I unpause, the support engineers will get, get to help building that. They not. I guess it just builds on its own. And once we've built that, we will then capture all of these metal harvesters and the transport flagship automatically. Well, and then they'll start working on things. All right, there you go. So we're going to start working on all the, the metal harvesters and stuff. We're going to pause immediately and just go, obviously, now on build. You'll notice we, we have only this planet stuff. We can't access, you know, it only shows local things. And like the, the um, even the battle station stuff. We can't build it here because the battle stations aren't here. The only thing that can actually build here at the moment is the planet command station itself, as you can see. But anyway, what we want to do is just get the engineers right. Get a full crop of engineers out as quickly as possible to help build stuff. And we can actually build three factories. So let's do that as well. We'll just build them over here. Button pause. Let's let all that get done. Why are these engineers like not doing... Don't you want to like help build stuff? Maybe they don't. Maybe they don't help build this stuff. Matter, you should consider automating some of your planetary defense options. No, screw you. So it's building a force field generator. There's a logistical command station. Giving us a bit more resources. We are losing metal because of all this stuff we're doing. On route. Oh, maybe the rejuvenator engineers can't... I don't know. I feel like they would be helping normally, but it doesn't really matter. But anyway, they're all going to just whip round, get all the metal harvesters. Those engineers do it much quicker, look. And they're going to start capturing that fleet, which has already gone to hotkey three. And you can see it's called... We didn't even know anymore. Okay, they're talking about the, the flagship. So that's all right. They're already pumping out units. Like <laughs> Strike Holmium. Holmium. Oh, that's horrible. Homium. We're calling it Homium. And that has um, paralyzers, gunbots, and stingrays. So we can actually have a quick look while it's building. Paralyzer... Advanced and expensive swarmer type that greatly reduces, oh, sorry, greatly damages bubble force fields while also causing paralysis. So it destroys fields and paralyzes. That's very good. Um, Gunbot, fast and cloaked swarmer with nearly no durability but incredibly high damage to targets with thick armor. And Stingray, advanced and expensive swarmer type that deals greatly increased damage to bubble force fields. So you'll notice all three of these are swarmers. It's obviously a swarmer group. So we probably want to try and get. Do we have any swarmers in here? We don't, right? Marksmen. The spiders aren't swarmers. No. So if we get more swarmer ships, we probably want to put it in this new Fleet 3 because it's all swarmers and they can all go swarm together and complement each other. So that has strength 6 at the moment. We're going to unlock some more ship types. So there you go. Helmsman. All right. So we need to build some defenses here. And what I am going to do on this one, I think, because the only two entry points, that goes back to our capital, which is fine, are here. We could actually build the turrets over here, and I think I will. The only slight worry is if they bypass the turrets and come over here, but we will probably have some station keepers to chase them. So I'm going to hedge my bets. We can build eight turrets, which isn't amazing, is it? But we'll build five, six, seven, eight. We could force field them. I probably won't. We'll get the um, the cloak detector, at least one on each thingy. Let's get a few tractor beams to hold them in place. We can build up to eight, so let's go three and three for now. Gravity gen slows enemies, so let's just get one in the middle there. And we can actually get 30 paralysis mines, so let's get like 15 at each. Like so, five, five, five. That'll be good. So we're going to spend a lot of metal, but we have plenty... I'm a little bit worried about this system, so I think I'll actually get all of the, all of these, all of the station keepers that we can get. It's going to be expensive, but we're going to get all of them, I think. And then when we get some more turret schematics, we'll be able to build more turrets. But this is where it's kind of nice we have an extra fleet, because if we need to, we can bring one over to help defend. Copy that. You guys want to make yourself useful? Oh, is it because I hit N? Oh, I hit N! 
I turned them off. I didn't even realize I'd done that. That's my bad. That's why they weren't helping construct. And that's why they were red. I know red is pursuit. Okay, just ignore me. The point is, I'd, I'd actually turn these engineers off, which is an amazing pango move. So yeah, we're going to get building. The mines have all actually built on their own. So they'll all sit there like this. When they're destroyed, we can rebuild the minefield. There we go. We've got some turrets. We're going to work on all this stuff. We're going to spend quite a lot of metal doing it. So, where do we go now? We've got, we now have a bit more strength because we've got two fleets, seven and six, which we can send together with the support, support, support unit. I would actually really like the ship line, but I think the turrets probably is the way to go. So let's, well, we can, we can, well, I'll show you. Let's just move. If I hit one, right click, two, right click, three, right click, they will just come through at their own speed. It probably would have been better to just see like the combat factory. It would have been better to just load everybody up. The engineers from the planet will keep working here, get all that stuff done, get all our frigates. Our watch frigates, they have pursuit on already, which is brilliant. Get them built. Right, so we know what we're going to do. Let's load up, though, for real. Load everybody up, and we're going to go to that one. Regulblum. Regulvium. Oh, we ran out of science. Oh, yeah, we were getting science from here. We now have 17k. Oh, we should probably get some science, shouldn't we? We should. So, firstly, I'd like to upgrade my command stations to get more resources and stuff and more storage. I think here as well, we'll probably build a logistical command station. So I'm going to propose that we get the logistical command station upgrade. Maybe even two marks of it to be cheeky. Let's do that. Let's upgrade it twice. And actually, that might mean we can build more turrets here, but we'll investigate. So the other thing to talk about with tech you can see here, okay, well, let's something that affects both ships and defenses. Ships are blue and defenses are green, which includes station keepers because they're defenses, really. These numbers in the middle are how many types of stuff it affects. So this one has got a three and a one, a blue three. And if you look in the ship section of the tooltip, it says rangers, spiders and paralyzers will be affected by this because they've all got subterfuge um, weaponry. Okay, and then one defense will be affected. And again, in the tooltip, paralysis minefield will be affected. You can see in the tooltip, it shows you how much strength it will be increased by. But also here on the left, it shows you, look, ships will increase total globally. You'll get six more, six more uh, ship strength and one, one more defense strength. If we get splash upgrade, we'll actually get 12 extra defense strength because two of our defenses are using it, the area minefield and the beam cannon. So you have this kind of thing to juggle, though. Do you go for the most strength increase or the most different types of units to upgrade? And they may coincide, but it's worth noting because, like, let's talk about ships and say, let's say you've got a load of strength. In, let's pretend this is much higher and you've only got one type of ship, the apparition frigate that uses raid weapons, but the strength increase would be huge. You could do that, but then suddenly you've only got the frigates, which are doing a lot of damage and they can't be everywhere and they can't attack everything at once. Whereas if we upgraded the core weapons, you've got two ship designs that use it, or the subterfuge even, sorry. You've got three types of ships which have all been upgraded. So it's really nice. I think we will actually grab that. I would probably like to get... And the same applies for the hull, by the way. All the defenses have turret hull, obviously, so a load of strength will be gained there. And the ships have a variance between light, medium, and heavy. I might actually grab... We've got 14,000 at the moment. I might grab a, a light hull upgrade because four of our ships use that. Okay, very nice. And then I think I will get the subterfuge upgrade. Maybe even two marks of it. I think I will. All right. That's 5k to go to the next one. And then probably the core weapons as well. Because that's a... We use it on our sniper turrets and on the gunbots and the ablative gatlings. So yeah, let's, let's grab maybe one mark of that. And why don't we get the disruptive as well for our pike turrets? Because we want our turrets to be good. So let's do that as well. And then for now, we'll leave it. I don't want anything else. I'm not going to go mad doing anything else. Let's just leave that there. We've got some tech just to upgrade our stuff. You can see that everything's become more powerful. Got more um, more strength. 11 here, 23, 33. And the question is, can I now build more turrets? No, I thought I might be able to, but it turns out that upgrade does not give me more turret capacity here. I thought it might. Or maybe it's... I'm not sure how that's affected, but we'll find out. We'll keep an eye on it. We'll keep an eye on it. No problem. It's fine. Oh, I'll tell you what I should do. Move at least one of my bases over here. I might not build any turrets yet from it. 
Don't want to commit to that, but let's move the shield defense battle station to here. We'll leave the eclectic one where it is in our home station, our home system, sorry. But I think I'm going to move that across, but I'm not going to commit to building any of its turrets just now unless we find out something really bad's coming. Okay, right, lads. Now that we've got some upgrades, let's all pile around. I just hit shift for some reason instead of, or is it even enter? I think I hit enter instead of spacebar to unpause. Let's go through ourselves. Let's, let's pause for a sec. There's a bunch of shit here waiting for us. We're, gonna, we're just going to rumble in. The support one back there. Okay, I'm going to unpause. Yeah, we've got a bunch to deal with here. Hopefully most of them run away. Go, 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 go. Okay, we're in. We're in. Oh god, they're already firing. Unload. Unload. Oh, I haven't put you on pursuit. I'm glad I thought of that for the new fleet. Unload, and away we go. Come on, chaps. Get stuck in. What are you doing? Come on. Oh, okay, they're going... To be fair, if they're long range, they will go... They will, like, kite away to... To further away before they fire. You can see we've only got two relatively small fleets, and there's already quite a bit going on. So that's why I say you can get you can end up with a lot of ships on the screen. Okay, there wasn't actually that much here, so that was fairly easy. Let's destroy that. Uh, just spread out a bit. All right, cool. So I'm going to capture this first. We need to hack the turret schematic server to unlock a new type of turret. But let's get a um. Let's get a logistical command post on the go. So you can see, look. Well, I didn't. Well, it showed it showed it as Mark III before I built it. So you can see what upgrades you have. Hunter fleet sighted. Are we good? <laughs> I think we're good right now. Okay, on pause. Let's build that. Right. Let's get the engineers up again. All of those. Let's get. We can actually build three factories again. So let's get those. I uh, don't really need a spy, which can go into an enemy thing cloaked and have a look around we can build eight pike turrets now what i might do we have got that one to worry about though keep hitting m instead of tab yeah no okay well well for now we'll build our turrets near the middle obviously we're gonna have a force field here but let's just get the turrets up i'm holding shift instead of control because i have no brain and we better get i want all this built it's gonna i'm probably not gonna queue up the Station keepers just now, because that's going to take too much. How many of these can we build? Eight. Let's build three there. Let's build three there. And maybe two here. Oh, and the paralysis mines. We can just build ten at each. We've got 30. Should really move my fleet. It's very in the way. But you can build on top of it. It doesn't really matter. There we go. Just come here for a sec. Okay, build, build, build. We're going to spend... Look how much Look how much metal. We're actually going to run out of metal. I think I've queued up too much at once. It should be a good description. Well, a good example. Completed. Yep, there you go. There you go. Metal and now... Now... And now it's going to take that long at the current rate. So obviously, it will change when things get finished to actually finish building everything that we've queued up is what that means. It doesn't matter, but it's going to take that long. But it can matter because if we get into combat now... And we lose ships, we can't build them. And we can't repair our ships while they're fighting because we don't have any metal. So that's the danger of queuing up too much at once. And I didn't realize I was overdoing it. I should have paid more attention to the cost of what I was doing. Bear in mind that, like, the force field costs 80k. We just built eight of these, which are 8k each. 4k and we, of these. and we Sorry, 4k per um, paralysis minefield. We built 30 of them. And we haven't even built the station keepers yet. But it does cost a lot. It was 50k for the... Um, command station as well i think so yeah if you haven't stockpiled up much metal since your last attack especially if you're pausing a lot and chatting you don't really think about it but you're not stockpiling metal while you're while you're chatting but yeah it takes a bit to get going but hopefully you'll be able to sort this out soon once everybody gets on top of things then we need to let metal generate a bit and right on cue we're going to get an attack wave we'll do that before the end of the episode why not so they're attacking emerita augusta from there with a strength 15 wave so what we're going to do is i'm probably going to bring why don't we load up my support fleet and fleet three and we'll leave fleet one here i mean i could honestly i could just take them all it wouldn't even be a problem but for the sake of argument let's bring fleet two and three here we'll go back this way we'll leave fleet one here to defend in case something weird happens while we're still building defenses all right here comes fleet three 
They're coming from Coria, which is why it's flashing red. We'll just put them over here to the side so that we <laughs> kind of have some room over there. We'll build the support fleet. Build? We'll bring it, sorry. Let's unload. We get, obviously, these are all swarmers, so it's going to be interesting. But uh, I'm sure between... Um, yeah, we've got plenty of strength between us to def deflect a 15 strength invasion. So I want all this built, and I want some metal. You can see that we're starting to get a bit in now. We're starting to finish things off here. The reason I want it stockpiled is A, to defend against this, in case we have to do repairs, rebuild things straight after, and B, because I'm going to soon start hacking, and if we go on hack, you can now see steel turret line. We can do it three times. You can do three, three at once for one, but what this means is whichever battle station hacks this will, will only be the only one that gets access to the new turret, but it will get a larger capacity. Whereas if I just do this one, everything I have gets access to the new turret, but just not as much. I will just be doing this one and we'll do three different turrets. So yeah, we're going to spend 24 of our 130 hacking points to hack this. But when we hack it, a, um, a, a bunch of ships are going to spawn out of it each time. So I want all my, well, fleets one and three here really to fight that in case it gets too much. And I need metal to repair and stuff while that's going on. All right, so these are arriving now. Oh my goodness. You can see my um, tractor arrays have made what's pause for a sec while this is going off. It's all like laser beams in the air. My, oh my goodness. What are these? Tethweeder Garden. God, Garden. Guardian. Oh, it's a zombie. Oh, it has a parasite bowl. Oh, it can zombify my stuff. Well, that's very disappointing. Um, That's frightening. See there, zombie. Because it was destroyed. The tractor beam stopping a lot of it, but that scares me. The fact that they've got zombie tech. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to load this up. Just on pause, load it up. And we're going to bring free one here because I'm frightened about the zombies. It might be fine. I don't want to risk it. Genuinely, I'm kind of scared. They probably won't do enough damage and the tractor beams are stopping a lot of them from doing too much. But let's get Fleet 1 in here. See all our mines now. So they, they turn into ruin, well, remains, sorry, because they've been used. Come on, Fleet 1, where are you? There you are. Unload. Engage. Please. It hasn't been that long. There we go. Okay, it's been dealt with. And so then all the engineers will get to work rebuilding. You will notice, you see at the bottom in orange text after the max cloaking points, cannot rebuild remains, must only wait another 27 seconds since no enemies present. So basically after the enemies disappear, you have to wait a period of time before you can rebuild things that were fully destroyed or used up. Right, load up and go, go back because we don't know what's going to happen here, do we? Um, and in fact, I want both back here, really. Does that load up? I pressed L on three. Did it do it? Oh, it did. I might even take two here and be cheeky. Because that's going to be the next thing we do. In fact, we might just... We'll do one level of that before the end, we end the episode. It's a bit of a longer one. But there's been a lot of stuff I've been looking at. See now the mines are being rebuilt now that that time period has gone by. We didn't lose any engineers or anything. We didn't lose any turrets. So there's nothing to rebuild. We can now build extra stuff from the battle station I moved here if we wanted to. Where is the battle station? Oh, it's here. Oh, I didn't move it over. I should have moved it over. Got a force field as well. Oh, no, I did. That's where the turrets are. No, I wanted it near the turrets. My bad, my bad. It's because the, all the engineers and frigates have moved up. Okay, lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So, what we're going to do now... Depends on what we want to hack. Oh, it's turrets, isn't it? So it doesn't matter which fleet we do it with. Because the, the, the fleet that you hack with, if it's a ship, they will get that ship type. Now, you can obviously just go in and, and swap them, but, you know, it's better to just do it with the one you want first, Starting. isn't it? No. So, let's hack steel turret line. What do we want? Let's pause for a sec while we decide, he says, even though he should be stockpiling metal. A steel turret. Fragile turret with a long range to counter similarly ranged enemies with higher damage under the cover of a force field, but unable to fire at near enemies. Oh, so it has a minimum range. Okay, subverted turret. Oh, it's a zombifying turret. When it kills stuff, it zombies it. Oh, that might be fun. Shredder turret. Extremely short range, but has a high generalist damage and some metabolism damage. Okay. You can see there it's got a defensive bonus. Um... Yeah, okay. Metabolization. Extra meta um, metabolic damage. Alright. 
and Bulwark turret, large and very durable turret that attracts some fire, using a paint-like material that interferes with targeting systems. So, attractant field, all shots fired against friendly units within range 3500 are automatically redirected to this unit instead. So it's like a tank, it's kind of interesting. I might get the really long-ranged one, you know, as my first. Because bear in mind, we're going to get three, and, th and this will all change, and there'll be a different set to pick from. But I think I'm going to get the long range by steel turret. So we do that. We'll say yes, hack. We'll unpause. That line will indicate the hacking. The hacking will only take 15 seconds. Some hacks will take much longer. And sometimes you can get attacked while you're hacking. Like, they'll react to it. In this case, what they do is towards the end, um, they start spawning some ships on these early ones, and they'll do it again now. And there'll be more. See how Swarm is getting stuck in? Very easily dealt with. It will be more next time. And then the third time it will be even more. We won't do that today. The only thing I will do now is I just want to go and build because now we got Bastille turrets. We can build eight. There you go. They've got much longer range. We'll just probably stick five, six, seven, eight. We'll get those built and we'll do the same in our home system. We've got 20 we can build here, which is brilliant. And again, I think for now, with Valencia still being a threat and Tania. What is that? We got cloaked enemies there. What's that? Frigates, come here. Or is that just like, is that just the, the background? We should have got those, shouldn't we? We should have built anti-cloaking. Oh no, there's nothing here. I'm just being a drama queen. All right, fair enough. Um, yeah, so anyway, we've got to defend from both directions. So I will probably just build the turrets in the middle for now. Even though they've got huge range, they'll be able to fire really far. But we'll probably just do them like this. Oh no, I can build 20 here, can't I? Dummy. Oh well, we'll do it like this anyway. <laughs> for fun. We can always move them later. Uh, one more. All right, sweet. So we'll have these really long Basile turrets here. And then finally, I just want to build some here as well. Now that we've unlocked them, we can get eight. I think because they are such massive range, we'll just build those in there. Okay, great. So next episode, we will go and hack the rest of the turret types we can get, defeat the ensuing waves, and then we can decide where we want to invade next with our with our newfound strength. We could actually go and wipe this out, get another combat factory, and then get that one. Then we do actually have this area kind of choked off. And then maybe we could get the economic bases instead to get more resources. That's an option for us. Anyway, it's been a long one. Hopefully that that's helped anyway to explain how the game works. Hopefully that's been clear. And uh, yeah, that's going to do it for today. So thank you very much for watching. Have yourself a fantastic day and I will see you in the next episode.